Hello and welcome to a special episode, special video. Here we're going to celebrate the season and uh, we're going to do it my way because it's my channel. Okay, <laughs> anyway, um, yeah, I wanted to make a little diorama because I have fallen into the deep hole that is diorama making, miniature making, world making, you know the drill. So, uh, not too long ago I painted a sheet of stickers and I just love them, especially one, hey Albert, <laughs> where I did like a graveyard scene with a lit candle. Now, here we celebrate All Hallows Eve, All Saints Day, where we light a candle for those who have passed. And I wanted to make something that is more towards that, but still keeping the spooky season for all of you Halloween celebrators out there. So what I'm going to do is, well, I did make a little sketch in my sketchbook here and I try to not just like a sketch, but like a mood sort of and jumped off from there. Now I had grand visions as always, but I also needed to sort of say like, what is action or reasonable for me to accomplish? So <laughs> with that being said, it's just about to begin. And I started off by making the gravestones and the candles. And I did the gravestones from, uh, I did Sanidlia for both of them. So I took the nature one for the stones. And then I tried to use the uh, transparent or translucent clay for the candles. I had this vision about using some LED lights and like them for like, so that it would really look like they are candles, that they are glowing. Will that work? I'm not sure. I have never used it. So now I am new to all of those and especially with clay. Any clay, I'm new. Just take that as it is. But I did watch a few YouTube videos. Thank you for YouTube, you know, you can learn anything. So I did some candles in different sizes. The only thing I really minded or made sure was it was a quite a big of hole, you know, because I'm thinking I might want to put the LED light in it. Like I said, I really want this to work. Will it work? We'll see. So that is my only, only thing. Uh, I want the candles to be like the, the thing about the diorama, but they don't look good, so yeah. Uh, with the other thing, gravestone, that is the other thing. <laughs> I just made different versions of it and I made sure to use a brush to stipple to get some more texture in there and I'm thinking I'm going to sort of make a dirty wash with some brown or black paint later just to make, you know, make it look a little bit dirtier because it's been outside. Um, so yeah, they're ready. I'm going to bake them. For some texture on the outside of this diorama, I decided to go in with Distress Texture Paste in Crackle just to get some effect that will become a little bit more visible once we start adding in the paint. And I decided to go in with these three paints. Use whatever you have. These are the paints that I liked to mix together and I decided to go in with this black ink by Dowleroni just because it is the blackest medium that I have in my library as of now. And something that I wanted to keep in mind while I was doing this is I don't want one flat coat of paint. I wanted the box to inside to be very dark because I want to light it up later. But on the outside of the box I want there to be a sense of very very dark but I still want that crackle to show through and a lot of different different nuances of the paint I have. So the way I did this was I used the three paints that I had and I thinned it down with water. This is so that I get different thicknesses and different values of the paint that I have uh, but also that the crackle shows through. Some parts of the box doesn't have anything between the wood and the paint which will give another finish. And that way you can get a lot more out of the paints that you have just by uh, thinking about how you're applying it. Now, after the, I didn't do anything more than this, I added my three colors, mixed them together, just apply them as they are, wash them down with water and everything. Uh, you can go in over and over to add more, build up more texture and interest, but I wanted this to be just quite subtle and I decided that it was enough to go with just this layer. 
As for the gate, that is sort of like the main thing about this diorama. That is the first thing you will see. And I think it would really, will really set the tone and the mood of this little diorama. And I had this idea in my head and I was like, can I execute it? I have no idea. Let me try. <laughs> so I thought the easiest way to do this would be to sketch it out and then take it over to your computer and cut it out on the silhouette. So by doing that, I feel like I can play around with it. It won't be straight lines because I can draw a straight line. <laughs> um, and like it's looking back at it, it's not like the best gate design ever. But you know, it's my design. I kind of like it. I like that they are not completely symmetrical. Albert doesn't like that either. <laughs> <laughs> it is and you know it's a really fun thing so what I did was I just took the measurement of the box like how far can I play with it so I knew like how big it could be and then I just started playing around with it the only thing that I really wanted to keep in mind was that I wanted a few bigger pieces in it so not everything had the same width or thickness of the gate because I knew that I wanted to play around with a little bit of different textures and mediums on it later on. And I wanted something that would show up. But apart from that, I just wanted to make it look a little bit gothic, a little bit ornate, without being too intricate and too complicated. Because, like I said, I know that I was going to take this over and try to cut it out with a silhouette. I have done this before with varying results. Sometimes it looks good, sometimes it's way too thin. So that is just something you need to keep in mind and play about with, with your machine or the way you do it. So to get it into or out of the silhouette, I should say, the way I did is I just took a photo of this with my phone. I tried to get it straight and then I hair dropped it to the computer and put it into Photoshop and I just removed as much of the background as I could and I decided to try and clean up the lines as best as I could well, while, while still trying to keep that sort of imperfectness that you get when you draw something by hand, uh, the un, unstraight lines, what do you call it, the crooked lines and everything. I wanted some of that to still be there uh, when I had done all of that, I made it just black, um, bumped up the contrast as much as I could so that once I put it into the silhouette, it would have no trouble cutting it out. And this worked really great. Uh, I did go through uh, a few different areas, try to just thicken up some lines, some of the others. Now, uh, afterwards, I think I should have spent a little bit more time on this part of it and just really gone through all of the lines because some of them were a little bit too thin but on the whole it worked really well the, considering how small they will actually be. I decided to save it as a PNG which means once I put it into the silhouette software I already have the cut lines. Jamie. <laughs> and then I just locked the ratios and then I typed in how big I wanted this file to be. And here we have it. I decided to cut it out four times. I ended up only using three of these, but it's really nice just to have them, you know, if something goes terribly wrong, you know, you have a few extra to play with. And I mean, I wish I had one of those really fancy laser printers or, or laser cutters. I have been yabbering on about it. I've been trying to get my brother to get into the laser cutting thing so we can like invest together. He is not really into that. He he wants a 3D printer and I'm like, oh, come on. Anyway, um, if I had that, I would cut this out of some acrylic or some wood or something like that. But I don't. But I do have some imagination and I'm pretty resourceful. So... <laughs> I took the heaviest craft paper that I had that I knew that my silhouette could cut through and I just loaded that up and cut it, like I said, uh, a few times. And this worked really great. So it took some time, but me and Albert, we were like, peace out, and uh, we left and went for a walk. Once we were back, the silhouette had done its magic and this is how it looks when it was done. Now, 
you need to be careful. <laughs> no matter how well my silhouette cut, I still need to be careful so that I just don't rip everything. And it did take some time. It was a little bit fiddly, but in all honesty, I kind of like fiddly stuff. I didn't really mind it. I put on some good music and, you know, I just did the thing, de-weeding it. Now, I like to have a few, like, old-fashioned sort of hat pin-ish things, whatever, just some pokey things and everything will be fine. Uh, it's just so rewarding to see this come together. I, I really am impressed by how intricate this silhouette could cut this at a really good quality. And like I said, the only, I had a few things that were too small, but other than that, it cut really, really well. And I was quite impressed because the blade is not a good blade. I should have changed it. Anyway, that is a whole other rant. In order to make this sort of into a little bit more like uh, wood or chipboard, that heavier weight of paper, well, it's really easy because all of these shapes are identical. We are cut them out from the same file. I'm just going to glue them together and I'm just using some white glue, PVA glue, and I'm using my finger because that is just the easiest way on this occasion. And I'm just going to put glue on one side, I'm going to take another, put that on, use some more glue, put the other one on, and voila, it's done. <laughs> it's really not that complicated. And this is something you can do very easily with any shape if you just want a little bit more effect of something. And these kind of things I like to take with me, even if a project is not good, it doesn't end up the way I want it. I try to think of what kind of tips and tricks or tools that I have learned that I can put in my imaginary crafting arsenal that I can use for something else. It doesn't need to be an actual tool, it could be a technique and knowing how to deal with different things. Now, there are other things, other tools and techniques that I do like. It is embossing. I love heat embossing everything. <laughs> uh, it can get a little bit messy sometimes, but you know, it's worth it. So all you need really is some form of glue, gluing pad. I'm using a Versamark ink pad. This one, I'm pretty sure I've had this one for three or four years. Uh, you can buy re-inkers for them, but they, they keep sticky for such a long time. And they are a true workhorse if you like embossing. So just, they are really an investment. And the embossing powders I'm using today are Stampendous. I'm using aged silver. Here you can see how that one looks. It is just, those, those embossing powders are my favorite. I love using them for everything. <laughs> Now, for the gates, I'm going to do something a little bit different. And what I decided to do was, because I want my vision anyway, is that I want the gates to be sort of open. So, whereas the fence, you will only see one side, so I only focus one side of it. But, for the actual gates, they will be slightly open, so you will kind of see it both inside and outside. So what I did was, on the inside of the gates, I stuck to the aged silver. For the, um, I wanted to sort of amp up the aging of it, and for that I decided to think like how how does aged <laughs> aged <laughs> graveyard gates look? <laughs> I don't know, but I I found another embossing powder that I had. I have a few. Don't judge me. They're investments. Whatever. Um, so, for the like, more like front side of the gates, I decided to go in with mostly the silver one, the aged silver. But then I sort of sprinkled in this aged green one. You know how like copper sort of turned this sort of minty, greeny color? And I just lightly sprinkled that on top and, and then melted it, obviously. And I just love, love how that looks. Now, I just want to quickly mention, because I didn't, because I forgot, <laughs> uh, before I embossed it, I just went around the edges with black. So I just diluted some black acrylic ink and uh, sort of wiped around so we don't have that sort of craft paper edges really quickly. So, uh, and that will sort of add to the a little bit rustic vision. What will really make this project come to life 
it is these tiny lights by Tim Holtz. You can get tiny LED lights from anywhere. I just find these tiny lights by Tim Holtz just perfect. Um, I think they are really well made, perfect for you for crafting, small battery pack, everything, you know. Tim Holtz knows what he's doing. So that is what I did. So I took my little candles here and I just, I hadn't tested them out. I was like, will this translucent clay really work? Will they show up? And I tested it and, oh my god, it really works. I was so, so happy. But we still need like a foundation. We have the dark box, so the light will really shine in it. But I still need a foundation. I don't want everything just to sit on one level. I want there to be like some depth into this box and I decided to try and make like a sort of like a staircase so we have a little bit of different levels now I love making these 3d projects but I don't have I have not made that many of them and I'm sort of very new to it I'm not really sure about the actual construction the the structure of how to make it last, you know? So all of this is just me trying and figuring out and trying again. <laughs> and here you can see, I'm just really trying to work out the best way to get this done, to make it fit and everything. In the end, I think it came together, but this this process of, of trying to figure out how to make the understructure, it took a lot of time. And I have sped it up because I wanted to sort of show my process of it, but at the same time, it's really boring. I do the same thing over and over and I get really frustrated that I can't figure it out and that I can't make it easy for myself. Um, if I were to do it again, I hope I <laughs> that I have learned something and I can make it a little bit easier. But at the same time, even though I hate to admit it, because I want everything just to be easy and, you know, um, I kind of like this too, the puzzle solving, the uh, trying to find better ways to do things and, and everything. And it's really hard to see the finished process or the finished um, project when you don't have the experience of knowing how it leads up to it. Uh, in painting, for example, it's something that I feel a bit more comfortable in comfortable in it. I can sort of see the end process when things is not going well, I can like, well, I know this stage doesn't look good, but I know this stage is where I need to be at this point in order for me to reach my final destination. But in projects like this, because I haven't made that many, I don't know if the stage that I'm in is the correct one or if I'm just wasting my time or, yeah. Anyway. <laughs> Oh, so uh, another thing, I come to the stage where I feel like I can start adding in the lights. And this wood is really, really uh, soft wood, so I can just take an oil and make a little hole in it. And I decide to uh, light up my candles or my lights here just to make sure that they are working. Um, they are very solid made lights but you can break them if you're too heavy handed on them so I just want to make them uh, make sure that they was working while I was going through them and uh, for your battery pack I'm not going to do anything anything fancy on the back side I'm just going to take some double sided tape uh, and stick that onto the battery pack so that will be on the back side at this point I started to feel like, oh crap, we're, we're getting to the final things, to start assembling things, and uh, yeah, so I did what I, I <laughs> what I thought was the easiest way, was to sort of place my items, I'm like, okay, I sort of want them here, and that way I could take my all, because here's where I want the lights to sort of stick up. Um, I want some of the candles to be lit up with the lights, that is the whole thing, why I wanted to use the lights, you know. And I just sort of folded the string half and pushed up the little lights uh, on the hat and then you can see like the candle fits really well on top of them. So that worked really well and I wasn't too worried about if the actual LED was sticking out on top, I mean that would make it more look like a flame. and. I'm fine with that. 
And then I just took my hot glue gun that I have here. It's a massive beast of a hot glue gun. <laughs> but you know, it gets the job done. Uh, I, okay, I'm just going to go off on a little sidetrack. I had this really nice one that I apparently ruined and I was really sad. And I have this big one that they say it's cordless, but you can just unplug it and then it will get cold. That's not cordless. I mean, that's just det detachable cord. It's not, anyway, okay, I'm just going to. <laughs> so, yeah, I'm going to hot glue all the things. And the candles I haven't done anything with uh, apart from making them. But the gravestones, I just made a very light wash of black acrylic ink. The, the same one I used for the actual box. And uh, just to get them looking a little bit dirtier. The background, I decided to use this pa background paper by Tim Holtz. I know, I love Tim Holtz. I'm going to use it. <laughs> and what I decided to do was I punched a, one, uh, a circle, just with a circle punch, and I'm going to use vellum on the back side because I want the light to shine through, but I don't want them to be light. So the vellum sort of diffuses the light a little bit. And I did poke some holes for stars, but... I was not careful enough by how I placed the remaining lights, so you can't really tell. So that is also a note for next time. I cut some pieces of cardboard and I'm going to glue that on to the box. And this will just get a, a sort, sort of that the background paper won't rest directly onto the box. And that will give the light string some, some room underneath. Um, to make you know the light come through <laughs> and even though it won't get hot because it's LED I just wanted a little bit of space in between and I'm also going to use the same sort of to add some structure to the actual grave staircase I don't know really what we're going to call it and it just because I decided to make it out of uh, craft paper I mean it's a pretty thick paper I think it's about 300 gsm uh, but I decided just on the steps up that to have a little bit more structure adding that in and uh, I'm just going to use hot glue for the um, the background paper here now adding <laughs> adding the background paper and then my little staircase and the lights to be in the right place oh golly yeah that won't be easy mm -mm. Uh, in this case, I really wish I could have sort of detached the lights from the battery pack. I think that would have made it easier, but here we go, they're working, everything is fine, and I'm actually really happy with how it looks. It looks really cool. And now to the fun thing, we can actually make this come together. I have been sort of falling into the diorama, miniature world making, and I have started to collect a little bit of um, grass and bush stuff. <laughs> I'm not really sure what to call it, but I have to say, these make such a difference. Oh gosh. So, the first thing I did was, I'm just going to use some matte glue, and I'm just going to brush that all over. Um, would this have been easier to do before I glued everything down? Probably, but here we are, you know, we're learning and uh, involving and, you know, stuff, all of that. <laughs> and I'm doing that and I'm going to start with the Army Painter battle Battlefield Grass Green. And I just put a, a spoon and sort of sprinkled it and it worked really well. I have a piece of paper folded in half underneath so I can just easily sort of empty it out and pour it back into my little container here. But yeah, it worked really nice. It's a really nice sort of uh, dead green color. That was, that was not very nice of me to say. But it's like, it's green, but it's not like in your face summer green. Um, it sort of has that a little bit of sap green, muted green look. I just, I really like it. Now, uh, I kept working with my brush and this matte varnish that I have, it's from Pentart, and I just added some bushy things. I have it from Woodland Scenes, uh, medium green. I have that, and I also have another that is lighter green. I have no idea what the make is because it doesn't say, so I didn't 
include that in my lovely <laughs> a product uh, little inserts that I've been doing throughout this video. But, you know, I think the Army Painter brand um, is really good from what I can see, and also the Woodland seems, seems to have really nice stuff. I've just been to Amazon. Um, I've tried to find some local shop in Sweden and, you know, support local. I just can't find anything. So, uh, Amazon has been the saviour uh, for this. And I have been doing some other little things. Uh, and I just have to say, adding these sort of little bushes and shrubs, and it just adds such a big difference. So I'm adding in, and I really like that I have a few different shades of green and a few different types of texture. So we have this sort of battlefield uh, grass green. It looks like really finely milled, like wood chips or something. I don't, I'm not really sure what it is, um, but it looks like you know short, short grass. And then the bushes come in with a different texture. And then I also have a few of these army painted lowland shrubs. Uh, I don't know if they have a, if they have a color, but you know, look look green. Um, but I really like that they have that different texture. It really adds a lot. Now I'm working on a very small scale. It doesn't look realistic because you know I'm I'm very new to the whole diorama building. But I just really like how it looks when it's all together. It looks a little bit more more realistic, you know. <laughs> uh, having all of these different different shapes and textures. So here you can see the little the little shrubby thingies. And I'm just I'm trying to use my my tweezers that I bought. These tweezers are the worst. I'm not going to link them. I'm not going to do anything. I'm just going to tell you how bad they are. I mean, you can't buy them because I haven't told you where I bought them, but it, it came in a pack of four. The yeah, just buy like you know from the grocery store or something. You know, tweezers that actually like pinch at the end and don't spray out. Okay, I'm done with it. <laughs> the bad tweezers. I mean, I'm going to keep using them because I have bought them, but I'm not going to tell you to waste your money on them. So. But yeah, so I'm going to continue picking up these little things and adding them and I just, I really like how it looks. I think you can go in and do so much more. Uh, looking back at it, I think uh, if I were to add the sort of grass before I put it into the actual box, I think I would have gone over with like some wash of brown or something like that. Um, I think it would be really nice to add in some like orange or brown leaves because um, All Saints Day is in the early November, late October, so I think that could be really nice to really emphasize the autumnal, almost winter feeling. But apart from that, I also wanted to add a little bit of that mossy texture on the outside of the frame just to sort of tie it all together to get some green up uh, to the frame so we don't just have the green, you know, uh, down. But, oh, it's the funny, funny, it's the final touch. It is the gates and the fence, and I am just, I love this so much. I think it actually looks like metal. That embossing powder is just the best. So I'm just gluing that on one side, and um, I, I really love it. And on the gates, I just add glue on the one side, and I'm going to try to put it at a slight angle here. You can see that green sort of poking through on the gate to make it look really old. And I just, uh, I'm really happy with it. So yeah, I think you can do more. Obviously I was first thinking about having some trees in the background, some bats, but in the end I decided that I'm happy with how simple it is. I wanted to make this as a sort of a spooky idea, a spooky diorama thing, but I also wanted to make something that I would enjoy and have on display at my house. And because we don't really celebrate Halloween here, but we do celebrate All Saints Day, where we go to the graves and we light a candle in the remembrance of others. And I wanted to have something that, you know, you can have a candle that you can light at home. I know many don't live close to where their relatives have uh, have their graves, 
and many don't actually have like a physical grave anymore. Many have, you know, are cremated or they have spread their ashes. And I just wanted to make like a little, a little decoration that would be nice to look at. But at the same time that you can physically light a candle uh, and remember the ones who have passed and still have that sort of spooky autumnal Halloween look and feel. In a conclusion, um, I just, I want to say that I'm really, really happy with this project. I really, I'm really happy with myself for making it. And it gave me a lot of inspiration and knowledge <laughs> moving forward. I learned a lot during this project and now I just want to make more. And yes, there will be another sort of diorama coming soon. Uh, it's more of like a statue, to be honest. Anyway, I hope you have enjoyed this project, that it has inspired you in any way. And I also want to sort of uh, hope that on uh, November 1st that you feel like that you can light a candle no matter where you are and uh, do that as a tribute to the ones that you have loved and lost. And um, Or maybe you would like to do something like this, where you can... Uh, we don't need a fire alarm. I don't know. <laughs> anyway, thank you so very much for watching. I hope you have enjoyed it. Uh, until next time, take care.